Thank you so much. Wonderful to be here. What an amazing show. Even more impressive than I was expecting. Um, so thank you again to Andrew. What an achievement. The Walker staff for making this happen. Uh, Ross for comparing today. Great pleasure to be uh, on the same panel with uh, Greg and Felicity. Felicity and I have a tendency to think about the same things completely independently. And uh, so she's already talked about Stuart Brand. I can hop over that bit. Uh, we're going to talk about Stuart Brand again uh, in, in uh, my little presentation. Should we watch how he encounters another uh, uh, emergent tendency that he's trying to script, to use uh, Felicity's term? So as well as trying to script um, computing, he's also trying to script other areas of the counterculture. What a fascinating guy, uh, as problematic as he is. So in the fall of 1974, Stuart Brand handed over an entire edition of his Co-Evolution Quarterly magazine to be guest edited by Oakland's Black Panther Party. It was an extraordinary act in the way that it momentarily conjoined two problematic and brilliant fronts of the counterculture of California's Bay Area, hippie and black power. Thumbing through the Black Panther edition of the Co-Evolution Quarterly today, we might wonder, what were the overlaps and incompatibilities between different countercultures of the 1960s and 70s? And living as we do today in a moment that feels sometimes like one of counterculture redukes, as we remind ourselves that black lives matter and that ecology matters and poverty matters, such that every track on Marvin Gaye's 1971 album, What's Going On, resonates again to today's listener, to what extent can different sorts of struggle find common cause? The strange object that is the Black Panther edition of the Coevolution Quarterly suggests no easy answers, I think. And the reason for that, whatever that gesture of camaraderie, the hippies and the Panthers necessarily understood the world differently because their being in the world was different. Hailing from a position of relative privilege, you see him there with Ken Kesey, white, educated and middle class, a hippie leader like Stuart Brand there on the left saw the problem of survival primarily as ecological and planetary, and therefore socially unifying across class, racial, and national boundaries, and aided by a universal transformation of consciousness that we might term holistic. Founded in 1966 by Huey Newton and Bobby Seale, the Panthers' understanding of survival was urban, that of a militant working class battle for the emancipation of a racial minority, such that consciousness meant the opposite of that sought by the hippies. It was a consciousness of class, of racial and national boundaries, be they in California or Southeast Asia. It was a consciousness of the dialectical antagonisms of totality that shattered the possibility of holism. When the hippies saw the first images of the Earth from outer space pictured on the covers of the whole Earth catalog, they saw evidence of a seamless integrated system in which we are all shareholders. When in 1970, Gil Scott Heron contemplated the space program that delivered the pictures, he was compelled to wonder to his principally black urban audience, a system that had put Whitey on the moon, but he couldn't pay his rent. With the Panther edition of the Coevolution Quarterly, two understandings of the world, the hippie holism of universal coevolution and the Panther totality of conflictive social relations, momentarily acted together on the same stage of Northern California. A bit uh, ahistorical here, because that's 1967 over there on, on the right in heap. So six years earlier. California's reputation as a place of reinvention as the frontier of a modern Western world, you know, this is something we could date back to the gold rush, was accelerating again through the ascent of tourism, media, computing, aerospace, and higher education in the state. Much as Prussia had offered Hegel an early 19th century stage upon which to imagine the emergence of a universal mind, the sum of consciousness of which our own individual minds are but a part, California suggested a late 20th century reprise. After the tumultuous end of the 1969 People's Park experiment, when a countercultural land invasion in Berkeley ended in fatal conflict with the state, hippie holism would try to hack the system, so to speak, 
to allude again to Felicity talking about computing. Uh, be it through, so you could hack, be it through entry into Californian state government during Jerry Brown's first administration when Stuart Brand was an advisor, personal advisor to the governor, to Governor Jerry Brown, or through environmentalism, or through food, or eventually through coding in Silicon Valley and through New Age culture. But as the most populous state in the Union, California was also socially and culturally unstable, fed among other population movements from World War II onwards by black migrants from the South, seeking work, but many eventually finding themselves stranded in inner cities like Oakland during middle-class flight to the suburbs. As counterintuitive as it seemed among the sun-washed Victorian houses, wooden, wooded hills and shimmering Pacific, this would be a global stage for the clash of modernities. And so just to back up for a second to what Andrew was saying about uh, Ros Krauss kind of, you know, sort of putting California in scare quotes and uh, uh, other. Uh, you see, this is the problem then when it comes to thinking about California. We think of it as being sort of other and, of course, the great uh, other to New York and Ros Krauss, but in some ways accidentally finding itself the center of the world. Uh, you flip over your iPhone, made in Cal uh, designed in California. What, why do we need to know this? It's, it's announcing something. Given the ultimate incompatibility of their understandings of the world, why had Brand chosen the Panthers to assume momentary responsibility for the co-evolution quarterly? Did he want to co-opt these Oakland holdouts of leftism into the hippies' new whole planet? Quite possibly. But Brand's stated reason, which we see up there in the foreword to the Panther Co-Evolution Quarterly, is more instructive than the nonchalance suggests. This is Brand's writing style. What a journalist. What a writer. That nonchalance. He wrote in his foreword to the magazine that, quote, the Panthers are the most effective community service and organization group I know. The Panther Co-Evolution Quarterly had the effect then of putting the Panthers and hippies in agreement on a fundamental thing, that the reorganization of the world would begin bottom up and inside out through self-reliance without recourse to government. Income from sales of the Co-Evolution Quarterly, for example, would fund Panther survival programs, as they called them. Model activities, it seems to me, brand mused, for, city, for cities everywhere. Foremost of these was the Free Breakfast for School Children program, still a, a wonderful thing to, 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 to look back at, which reportedly enrolled 10,000 children in breakfast kitchens across the U.S. by late 1969. Nutritional, educational, rec recreational, and spiritual nourishment. The heart of the hippies' catalogue was also in its own way at the heart of the Panthers' co-evolution quarterly. But survival as a key motif of the counterculture and its times likely meant different things to hippies and panthers. For a hippie like Stuart Brand, survival was a Malthusian challenge caused by global systems malfunction of the sort being described by the Club of Rome on the left that prevented resources from being distributed and traded. For the Panthers, survival was a concrete local condition caused by economic deprivation, military conscription, and racial profiling. Many readers of the Whole Earth Catalog vicariously imagined their survival off the urban grid, while Panthers tried to imagine their survival on the urban grid. Paid employment was refused by hippies who chose voluntary poverty by which to secede from consumerism. Great idea. Whereas Panthers demanded employment as one of their 10 points program of 1966. At the controversial 1969 B-In, Life Raft Earth, sponsored by the Whole Earth Catalog, hippies voluntarily starved themselves to draw attention to global hunger and the unfairness of what they considered to be a solvable problem. And you see the event there. It was a bit of a sort of calamity, but it happened. What the catalog asked in an effort to focus the American mind, does hunger actually feel like? A tremendous moral tenor there. This was unlikely, however, a question asked by beneficiaries of the Panthers Free Food Program. Survival programs, the Panthers Co-Evolution Quarterly explained, meant, quote, survival pending revolution, like the survival kit of a sailor stranded on a raft. 
Simply give people access to tools, Stuart Brand argued, the capacity to feed themselves or an addition of the, whole, uh, of the co-evolution quarterly to edit, for example, and stand back. His was a buckskin frontier, a degree zero for America and the world. Bad repro here, but it is from the first Whole Earth catalogue. Hippie buckskin, caftans and sandals, singularly inappropriate for urban warfare, spoke of frontiers elsewhere and perhaps from other times. A pacifist fantasy of opportunity for all during Europe's expansion into Asia and America and Africa. And earlier, when he was talking to Dick Calvert, was he wearing a pith hat? The equally iconic guerrilla style of the Panthers in serried ranks of debonair black jackets and a facing black glasses claimed the right to secede from a country seemingly incapable of delivering its Jeffersonian promise to communities of color. The Panthers' fists and fingers were raised, signifying militant and inspirational struggle. The hippie insignia, meanwhile, was that of the mandala and its seamless integration of the world's contradictions. And uh, Greg and Padma Maitland of Berkeley have been doing great work on mandalas, and I'm indebted to that. So I want to conclude my segment by suggesting that these aesthetic differences, I'm not being wholly trivial doing the, the um, buckskin and, and leather analogy. These are aesthetic differences that are conveying two ways of encountering the world and acting in it. The mandala was dynamic. We see it out in the exhibition spinning, suggesting a world in motion. Hippie holism prototyped the future as the great game of life. Thus, people can simply turn up and make a park, as they did at the People's Park, realizing the flow of energy in the now. This is very much uh, how Andrew was explaining the way he reads hippie modernism. So they can do the People's Park. Here's Bobby Seale. You mean you just took that land without asking anyone? This is what he asked about the People's Park. As a minority, the Panthers did not dare seize land directly, instead buying land, then leasing or selling it for community development. Hippie aesthetics had to bind their spatially dispersed constituency into a new nation. So, so many of the diagrams we see of the, are of that sort of new nation, but having to be networked because it's so spatially dispersed, because America already belongs to a lot of its constituents. Doing the work that oppression, neighborhood, and programs did to organize inner city black nationhood. The hippie aesthetic was immersive, the rock concert, the happening, psychedelia, the sexual revolution, urgently attempting to affect connection. Panther art, notably that of Emery Douglas, was of the figurative social realist tradition committed to a political objective. Very, very different aesthetic. As far as possible in hippie aesthetics, here at the 66 Trips Festival, the medium was the message to draw on Marshall McLuhan's explanation. Favorite hippie motifs included the amorphousness of light shows recalling the theosophical abstraction of Vasily Kandinsky, acid trips and road trips unfolding with only a dim sense of destination, the capriciousness of the I Ching. Instead of the organization, charismatic leadership, dictums and symbols of radical pantherdom, the hippies cultivated supposedly leaderless free association, although Stuart Brand does seem to turn up a lot, and mental ecology. Hippies expanded the mind through psychoactive drugs, while the Panthers, whose community had been decimated by narcotics, prohibited drug use. The Panther Coevolution Quarterly focuses our attention on the momentary interaction of the left and right of the Bay counterculture. The Panthers, devotees of Marx, Malcolm X, and Mao, and Stuart Brand's libertarian hippiedom, intrigued by Ayn Rand and biological analogy. That comparison and contrast, old technique of an art historian, uh, helps us inspect two parallel yet distinct and far-reaching worldviews for which I cannot be a spokesman, but which I am compelled to try and understand. One downside of the exercise is that it passes over other liberation movements, notably that of second wave, wave feminism, for example, and more pressingly, it excludes the vital middle of the countercultural spectrum where, for instance, ecological and poverty awareness might overlap. And I think that's what, something that Felicity is getting at by saying, well, look, Ant Farm can show there can be another way. But that overlapping between eco and poverty awareness, I wonder if that's back again today? 
My hunch is that we are revisiting hippie modernism now to understand better what we learned and forgot in the 1960s and 70s, how it was that milquetoast cyber culture, sustainability and entrepreneurship that you see there at a TED conference, bequeathed by hippie holism, came to stand for American progress, yeah? Even though its acceleration of industrial environmental change has been anything but steady state. Look at climate change. And how it might be put back into its discomfort zone, that discomfort zone that I see with that coevolution quarterly edition, as it encounters profound inequality, uh, Ferguson, Mazora as one of any number of images that we could be putting up to illustrate that idea, so that we have political coevolution again, not an imbroglio of self-reliance. Thanks so much for that. That's great.